Welcome to Equipers Zamir. In this video, we are going to learn how to add a trigger to our data pipeline in Microsoft Fabric. We will be having a discussion about job event type of trigger. So first of all, I want to take you to the workspace. I have the sale workspace. I have pipelines here and I'm going to create two pipelines very quickly. So first of all, we'll say new item and data pipeline. I'm going to call this PL mean. And uh, guess what? Uh, we will uh, have PL main here, and then we have a PL child. So we could have a PL master or a PL main. So it depends uh, whatever the name you want to give. Here in the pipeline activities, I want to give uh, this one activity called uh, uh, wait, and uh, this will be only waiting for a couple of uh, seconds. Uh, so that's good. And uh, now we can call this. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, wait and call this main. So this is our first uh, pipeline. I'm going to save uh, and go ahead and save it. And now we'll be creating a PL child. So let's go to the uh, workspace again. And here we will say new item and uh, data pipeline. And I uh, will call this one PL child. And uh, then uh, we'll add uh, the wait activity here as well. Our goal is not to understand uh, all those different activities here, but to how the trigger works. Uh, so I'm going to add uh, wait here and uh, then uh, two second wait is fine here and uh, I'm going to call this wait as a child. Uh, you don't even have to do that. We just want to make it more uh, reasonable like look like at least a uh, parent child relationship right here uh, something like that. So our goal is uh, when uh, somebody runs the main, PL main uh, after the PL main is completed, I would like to run the PL child. So on success of uh, or even failure of uh, PL uh, main, uh, we would like to uh, run this uh, PL child. So depending on the different events, I'm going to show you different events that you would like to choose. So now let's go ahead and uh, we are here in the PL uh, main and uh, what we would like to do, uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, add a trigger here. Um, so let's... Uh, go to triggers here and uh, now what we are selecting here select events so, and in this uh, case uh, we will be exploring the very first uh, type of the event here that is called job events so, events produced by status change on fabric monitoring activities such as the job created succeeded or failures uh, so that we can use it right here now actually uh, what I want to do um, instead of uh, creating the trigger here, I want to create a trigger in the ch child uh, uh, pipeline. Why? Because uh, when uh, main completes uh, successfully or all that, then I want to execute the PL child. So I will be creating the trigger here. So this trigger will be uh, keep looking for the main. Uh, and once it com completed the main, then it will trigger this uh, PL child. So let's go back here and uh, then uh, we are going to go right here. So in your scenario, maybe it will be totally different scenario, but you, you, it's the relationship between two of those pipelines. I want to uh, have one completed and then run the other one. So here uh, we have different events um, and you have a job created uh, and uh, then you have a job status change or job succeeded or job failed. Uh, you can uh, totally unselect all of them and then uh, here we say when the job is uh, successful. Uh, so that's fine and then uh, click on the right here in the canvas uh, and uh, then uh, we say uh, buy item. Uh, so which item in the sales uh, workspace uh, and then item is the uh, main. Uh, so when the uh, PL main completes, uh, then uh, run the PL child. Uh, so here uh, we are not doing anything else, but if there is some more filters you want to apply, you can. And here are those fields such as the source, subject, type, time, and all those are different uh, filters are available. I will show you these filters in the monitoring tab as well, so you can understand and you can work accordingly. So you have uh, different types of it. Let's say if I would like to say uh, job status, uh, you know, and uh, I want to apply some filter on that one, I can do that. So here is the field. Then you have operators such, such as string in, string not in, begins with, and begins with, and all that and here you will put the value now in our case uh, we are going to just delete uh, and we are thinking when our pl uh, main uh, is run, runs uh, and uh, it is successful uh, then uh, pl uh, child should run automatically so we are going to hit uh, next and you can see right here you have fabric events and it is saying successful and or succeeded and uh, it is on artifact uh, event sources and uh, workspace this and the pl main if uh, pl main runs and succeeded then pl child would automatically trigger so that's what our goal is 
Now once uh, this is done, uh, then you have to uh, select one item here and create a new item. Uh, so what's uh, going to ha happen that my, it's an activator. So I'm going to call this one uh, my um, child trigger. Okay. So create. Uh, once we create that, uh, what's going to happen is going to create this uh, activator item. Uh, and uh, we'll, I will show you how exactly it looks like. Uh, so every time we will run the PL main, it's going to create an entry there. Uh, uh, and the event, uh, you will be able to take a look on those details. Uh, and uh, then uh, your PL child will execute. Uh. Okay, so that's completed. Uh, and uh, we can see that the alert is created. The alert uh, was uh, successfully created in my child trigger. The alert will take action when the condition uh, you set is met uh, you can open the activator uh, to view the events um, so okay so we want to open it fine and here is uh, your location uh, my child trigger fine and that's a job events and if it is on success uh, and uh, then run a fabric item so if we need to run on the pl main what's going to happen that's going to be successful and then, and then once the job is successful it's going to trigger the pl child Let's open this uh, and now we'll take a look there. And uh, you can see that uh, we have uh, this uh, PL main here and uh, then uh, PL main has this event uh, created on top of it. Uh, and uh, once uh, that get executed, uh, then uh, what's going to happen, uh, that's where uh, uh, if it is successful, uh, then it's gonna trigger uh, the PL uh, um, uh, child. So see more details here. So you can see uh, live feed, you can see the definition and here is your PL main event. So you have a condition and you can see more information like monitoring event, PL main event, conditions on every value whenever it is successful, action, you run the PL child if it is the PL main is successful. You can also test from here if you want and here is your analytics so you can see more details and uh, here is your history that you will be able to see as of now there isn't really any record because we have not executed pl main at all now i'm going to go back here and uh, just uh, you can close from here and uh, then uh, first uh, you will go to the workspace and uh, one new item should be created so my child trigger is created you can see right here so that's fine you can always come back here and click on here once you click it's going to open this interface for you now, if I will go back here and uh, let's uh, run the PL uh, main and uh, we can run from here. And uh, then once the PL main is running, uh, so you see right here, it has to be successful. Uh, so if we go to monitor here and uh, that's where uh, we are seeing that PL main is, uh, so now it's gonna get started and again completed. Uh, so this, uh, all these actions I've shown you, okay, PL main is completed successfully. And now we are expecting once the PL main is successfully completed, then it should, the trigger should run the PL child. So if I will just refresh here and now even a PL main is completed in our pipelines here, you see right here, it is completed successfully, but still the monitor tab is not showing us completed. So I am refreshing and multiple times, it's gonna take a minute maybe to show me it is completed successfully. So this is one of the struggle I can tell you I faced because the status is not like changing right away here in the monitor. And uh, that, that's uh, kind of annoying. Uh, and also the trigger uh, uh, ran after a long time. Uh, so my expectations were like, hey, guess what? Uh, once I run my PL uh, main, uh, the PL uh, um, child should run right away. But uh, honestly, it take a long, very long time. Uh, in 10 minutes, in uh, I was doing this experiment and uh, I was, uh, uh, maybe I can show you somewhere. So I deleted those pipelines. It took almost 10 minutes uh, before it uh, initiated the PL ch child. Uh, so if I refresh now, and as uh, you can see right here, so it is a 3.42 uh, p.m. And uh, then uh, if we, I'm expecting it should run the uh, next uh, pipeline right away. So we'll see how long it will take uh, to run the next pipeline, even the trigger is uh, there. Now, if I come back to this interface and uh, refresh uh, here, so we should see some records. Uh, so let me refresh. Uh, and uh, then uh, we should see at least one record uh, saying like, hey, guess what? Uh, you have uh, uh, one record uh, that you have started the PL main and uh, there is an event right here. So I'm waiting for it. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to the uh, last 15 minutes. 
So because uh, there, there isn't really a whole lot of records, but you see that there is a filter here. You have auto refresh here as well. And uh, our pipeline completed the at uh, 342 so you can see right here now it's almost three minutes and uh, this uh, i'm not seeing this event right here so let's see if uh, this comes uh, so soon so it has completed and if i go to alert here so you can see right there there is not much uh, i'm seeing right now just wait for it it should uh, come here and uh, then uh, uh, we will see from there i'm gonna go back here and refresh our uh, so you see that it's uh, almost four or five minutes, but I'm still not seeing a record here in the even uh, in the this events here. And uh, so let's see what's happening. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and come back from here. So I'm gonna go back to my pipeline again, and here's my child trigger. So I'm gonna open, reopen it, and see if that helps. It's almost a good 10 minutes uh, and uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, execute this pipeline again and uh, then uh, uh, I'm hoping uh, this time it will capture that event for us. Uh, so when we run the PL main, uh, then it should, if it is successful, uh, then our trigger should uh, run our PL uh, child. Uh, so now if I go back to our monitor here and uh, we will take a look here, you see that uh, P we executed PL main like at uh, 342. Then uh, we are running at uh, 352 and uh, we are, uh, let's see, we are expecting something. So right here is, uh, should complete successfully. And now also let's take a look. Uh, okay, there is the one entry now. Finally, we have entry here and uh, this entry is uh, uh, at, uh, so 745, well, that means the entry is like, uh, it. The, for the first run so if you go to monitor here this uh, monitor was uh, see right here this was completed at uh, 3 um, 42 and then uh, it did not run our PL child for that execution uh, almost uh, it took uh, 10 good minutes uh, before it got to the PL main so this uh, uh, what we have to do we have to wait here so if you wait here, you can see that this is our first entry when we executed at uh, 3.42. Uh, and then uh, our PL child ran right after 10 minutes. So, so and in the, our uh, triggers, uh, uh, we did not see the entry till like uh, nine, 10 minutes uh, as well. So you can see right there. So now I am uh, going to wait for the, say another run we did for the PL main. Uh, is at uh, 352 and um, I'm not sure if it is going to take exactly 10 minutes uh, for the child to run uh, so we can wait and uh, see there and uh, but this one is related to this task so this PL run at 342 and uh, this is coming uh, and the first one uh, PA it ran the PL uh, after 10 minutes so so maybe there is a time frame here I'm not uh, sure um, if I can maybe pull some documents or somebody, if you, you guys are experimenting and seeing there is like, hey, guess what? These events take 10 minutes to get uh, to the uh, here in the events. Uh, and uh, then uh, from there, uh, uh, it take almost uh, 10 minutes. Uh, so it's, it, this is, um, I'm not sure, <laughs> honestly, I need to um, further research on this one. Why? It has taken so long because it's not uh, 10 minutes every time. I did actually experiment it before and uh, what it was doing, it was uh, running four minutes or five minutes or three minutes. Or so I have seen all those different things. Uh, so maybe there's something I'm missing. Uh, this was run and then uh, this uh, executed this after 10 minutes. So that's the right. Uh, so our trigger works, uh, but the time between them is uh, kind of that's uh, making me think. Uh, so I'm going to look for master. Uh, Okay, that I have deleted actually, so that's why maybe the records are deleted. So let's wait for the second execution. This was at uh, 352, and I'm trying to find uh, if uh, my trigger has that entry now. So it should have another entry here. So right after uh, we uh, ran our pipeline at uh, 342, then uh, this uh, there is a event uh, uh, at uh, 44, so after two minutes. So let's wait and uh, look for the second uh, entry because uh, we have already executed uh, one more time the pipeline here and uh, we should be expecting an event uh, there and then uh, execution for the PL child. 
So Fabric uses the, the event streaming and pooling mechanism behind the scene. So job might succeed uh, quickly, but uh, it uh, captured by the event uh, listeners, uh, and uh, but not pushed right away. And uh, sometimes uh, due to that, uh, it can take some time. And uh, literally, like if you are looking for, uh, hey, guess what? Uh, my job should be completing right away. The next one should be uh, triggering. Or maybe you want to have uh, some other mechanism uh, instead of using the job events. Uh, so here, uh, almost uh, 10 minutes are there. And uh, again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a look here and see if it is captured. Not yet. Uh, and now what we are going to do, we are going to go to monitor again. And uh, here uh, we are going to refresh uh, and my expectation is uh, once uh, uh, that's captured uh, the event uh, then it should run a uh, PL uh, child. So still I'm not seeing that uh, right here. So hopefully it will come real soon and then uh, our uh, child uh, pipeline will run. Okay, great. So exactly after uh, 10 minutes uh, we are seeing uh, another record came here and uh, we are good now here and you can see it is just on uh, 53 so we have uh, we can go to monitor here and now we see that the child pipeline is executing so in the event hub you can see all those uh, different uh, events uh, uh, and this is for our PL main and we see that when we executed the PL main the there was the event created and then uh, it uh, executed uh, the our PL uh, uh, child on that uh, you can see that right here on the action and that's what we wanted to do. So I hope uh, this video is helpful. Uh, let me uh, see. It should complete uh, successfully, no problem at all. So it, there, there isn't really a whole lot of activities here. But you see that the time it took almost 10 minutes uh, between uh, the execution of uh, PL main and uh, PL child. So uh, just keep in mind, uh, maybe experiment with your paid account uh, and uh, that might have a better uh, timing uh, and uh, this is a trial version so I'm not complaining at least I'm able to perform the demo by using this uh, uh, trial version now okay finally our uh, PL uh, child is completed as well and this was uh, related to this execution so when we ran this uh, PL main uh, at uh, 352 and uh, this is the outcome of that uh, PL uh, child because of the trigger what happened of this event when we executed this and this is uh, related to that one so here is one more thing I want to tell you, like you can uh, go right here, let's say PL main alert, if you want to change the action type and all those kind of things, uh, you can get, click on edit action here and then uh, let's say instead of uh, PL child you want to run another uh, pipeline, you can always uh, select from there and uh, then uh, connect from here let's say and then uh, you can change and you hit apply or you can just uh, ignore the changes so they, these are different options are here as well available so make a change from here and you can also do the test run and send a test action from one of the available data points so that's gonna run the test as well and you can see from here it will show you see right here it is you're running your child pipeline so if you will run the test whatever the item you want to run it will run accordingly so i thank you very much for watching this video please subscribe my channel and i will see you guys in next video